It's Coulter Emeritus, and we're joined by Just John. Uh, congrats on the new EP, dude. It's called This Is Fade. It came out last year, and uh, people are loving it. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're loving uh, spinning your stuff on the edge right now. And it's such a bummer. This pandemic has been so disappointing because usually we like to have artists in and we have a whole stage right on Sugar Beach. And then we get to have listeners come in and jam and get to know the artist on a more personal level. And we haven't had the pleasure of having you do one of these yet. So it, it just feels so like disheartening that we have to do it through Zoom. But hopefully down the road, we can have you on Sugar Beach jamming. For sure. I see this as a precursor, for sure. <laughs> This is the appetizer. Yeah, definitely. So when you released This Is Fate uh, late last year, you also included a short film with that. Um, what came first, the audio or the visuals? Like, do you, do you kind of work on, because you've ex like explained your music before as kind of like a visual experience. So does the music come to you first or do the visuals? And then how does that all come together? Yes, um, I think like when I'm making the music, I always starts with the music and the sonics first. But you know, when you're in the middle of that session, you kind of already see like the trailer to to the bigger picture that's going to happen. Or you see, okay, like like even how movies are made. Sometimes you do like the crazy like final scene first. You shoot it first. And I find like when I'm making music, a, a lot of that happens um, often. You know, I'm like, oh, I made this record. I'm like, okay, I, I made this record first, but I knew I knew Open Wound was gonna be like the last record on the project, or and just kind of just filling out the pieces in the story and and always trying to tell a narrative. I went to school, uh, I went to school, I studied journalism, so a lot of my music automatically just has like a a kind of a narrative component, or I want to just tell stories or create stories um, for for my audience. When we love. Um we love just experiencing storytelling because I feel like, and you know, you're in the music industry. So much of it now is just like single, single, single. So when we see a project like This Is Fate, whether you're listening to the audio only version on the EP or whether you're watching the short film, it's nice to experience that narrative. Um, now we're, we're a couple of days, uh, we're recording this at the end of February, a couple of days left of the month, a couple of days left of Black History Month. You actually, um, you got together with the Black Alliance and uh, you guys did a bunch of covers. Now you chose Missy Elliott's My Struggles. Why did you pick that song to cover? Yeah, so Missy Elliott, first off, is so iconic. You know, everything from, you know, her performance to her, her lyrical ability to her collaborations with Timberland have always been so trailblazing for the culture and so relevant even today. And I think that inspired me and really pushes me and, 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 and what I emulate for my career. Um, to always be experimental, to always push the boundaries, to always be authentically myself. And that was the main reason why I chose Missy Elliott. And then the second reason was because of the song and I really resonated with the hook. Um, the hook really speaks to a lot of resilience. And often as black people, we have to be so resilient just to get our foots in the door. And I feel like with that record, um, it speaks to this idea of resilience, but it also says like, okay, yeah, you don't know my story, you don't know my past, you don't know my traumas, but it doesn't really matter because I'm here now and I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna show up even better. And I think that, that it's a testimony to that and that really touched me. You know, it's interesting because you talk about, you know, the struggles or how difficult it is to get your foot in the door in the music industry. And this is something that we see a lot with um, newer artists because, you know, all of a sudden you'll start making waves and everybody's just like, oh, it just happened overnight for this person. And it's like, no, it never just happened overnight. You finding them may have happened overnight, but they've been working on this for years and years, grinding it out to get to this moment at, for the hope that you will stumble on them overnight. Yes. It's so true. It's so true. And it's like, you know, you really have to love this. You have to, because it's really that idea of, of perseverance and, and consistency. I think consistency is the strongest power, you know what I mean? And it, you're consistent for so many years just to be discovered overnight, right? And you hear that story yeah. again and again. It's so true. Well, and you speak well, about how it's, you know, it's even more difficult for people of color to break into that door. And, you know, I don't think it's any secret that it's extra hard in an alternative music industry. Um, you know what I mean? Like rap and hip hop are one thing, but when you go into alternative music, there's no denying that it's a predominantly white genre. So it is, it's a lot more difficult. And it's just like, like kudos to you. Cause I think that your stuff is just incredible. And I'm so happy that we're playing it on our station. 
um, I'm very grateful to have your support. And, you know, it's really just, you know, I call myself just John because I don't know how to be anyone else but myself. And so I've always knew that I had to, you know, if you're going to be authentic and you want uh, sustainability, you have to be able to suffer sometimes to get to those points. And you have to know what you want and you have to stand by it. And I'm just grateful to have such a strong support system and a wicked band that really sees my vision and, and, and champions it every step of the way when I'm in the room and when I'm not in the room. And I think that's really important, especially in this industry. Well, listen, we're really excited to, uh, to see the first of two performances today on your very first South of Beach session. Again, this is just John, 102.1 The Edge, and this is, uh, this is your song, A Thousand Corpses. Hey. Just John, that was a performance of A Thousand Corpses. It is so good to be having you here in a virtual capacity for what we call a sofa beach session now because everybody's watching from their couches. Now, you've talked in other interviews about the city of Toronto specifically and, you know, needing to invest more infrastructure for artists and kind of like help our Toronto and our local artists. What do you think that looks like? Like, in your, what would be your ideal situation and what do you think it's going to take us to get there? Oh, that's a good question. I think it really just takes more, more different narratives and experiences from people of color, from artists from different backgrounds and upbringings in the room. You know, I, I'm, in my record, Black Ghosts, I speak a lot to straight to the source. And I think that's a really important key. I think like there's one part of like, you know, being online and, 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 protesting and complaining about things that you want to see happen and there's another thing about like understanding your agency and when you understand your agency you can find ways to take the power back and sometimes finding ways to take the power back is actually being in those rooms and i feel like if we have more different varieties and different voices in those rooms then we can have a more um palatable perspective and a palatable um cultural landscape and I think that's like a really big step. So just, I think really more stories and people just empowering themselves to make the change. We can't, you know, it's, it sounds cliche, but we have to be the change and it starts with us. Yeah, it's all about bringing more people to the table and, and making that table bigger, right? You know, encouraging, making the spots and then encouraging people to fill them. 
you you yeah. mentioned um you know working in an online space and protesting in an online space you actually found a lot of your initial success online um you've mentioned in previous interviews specifically on instagram and i love this story um you actually started out with like a sponsored post yeah <laughs> I did. I did. That's where I found my, my, my good friend and heavy collaborator, Dom Diaz. And, um, you know, I think it's again, right. It's like, it's you either adjust or die. And when it came to marketing myself or putting myself out there, I always knew that like, okay, when I was like coming up and like gigging in different places that like, okay, maybe I'm like, maybe I'm performing to the same kinds of people and I'm starting to feel low ancestral now. You know what I mean? I knew I had to get to a space where it's like, put me in front of different ears, put me in front of different eyes and then let the people decide. You know what I mean? Even if it's, even if it's 20%, 30%, 10% of cats, you know what I mean? That come on board, they're a part of my movement and let's keep, keep it moving. And I think like with the internet, I've been able to just find um, a really cool tribe of cats that really just support what I'm doing. And, you know, it's the coolest thing when you have that, those connections. And I know we can't really be in person, but when people can connect with you online and even if you just talk back to them or, you know, you just like uh, give them the time of day to listen to their stories, you know, people want help and, and they look to they look to the artists, you know, for guidance. And I think with not only my art, but also like um, the things I speak to, it, it, it helps, uh, you know, give some light in, in, in moments where it could be a little dark. And I think we have to embrace that. And, you know, the internet helps with that. So, yeah. All right, well, we'd love for you to play another tune for us. We're gonna do Open Wound now. Again, this is just John on a Sofa Beach session. Hey. Take some roads alone. Like Papa, I'm a rolling, rolling stone. I just need some love, I need a home. When it rains, it's mud, it's stay my clothes. I roll all in my veins, I'm bleeding gold. I roll all in my veins, I'm bleeding gold. I roll all in my veins, I'm bleeding gold. I roll all in my veins, I'm bleeding gold. I got some friends that turn enemies that resent me. I still show them love, so they respect me Champion on the ice on Gretzky Try to check me, gotta have a check beat Gotta watch out for these vices and these hoes that tempt me I just do my walk, I'm stepping over, crabs can rap me They all like to talk, but these niggas haven't met me Knock it out the park, they gon' see it on my score sheet I'm better off now, gotta hold on me But you can't take my crown People had to leave, but I got some space now. I'm gone in space, wow. I don't need nothing, just give me love. My heart will always tell me what it wants. And I don't think they know that I'm enough. Yeah, I don't think they know that I'm enough. I don't need nothing, just give me love. My heart will always tell me what it wants. And I don't think they know that I'm enough. Yeah, I don't think they know that I'm a now Leaning to the ugly or the opulence Is vulnerability for optics or for confidence I left the hero too long, became the villain And now they wait for my fall outside the building, whoa! Know the tea's appealing and you got an appetite for anger Cause it's easy, I'm on my knees with all the grievances you leave me with I'm in the drop like a baby chef Before I finish My heart will always tell me what it wants And I don't think they know that I'm enough Yeah, I don't think they know that I'm enough I'm bleeding gold.
That is Just John with Open Wound, part of the Sofa Beach series here on 102.1 The Edge. We are Coulter Emeritus. Uh, we are speaking with Just John today. This is such a privilege uh, to be on this Zoom chat with you. I have a question. Um, one of my favorite subreddits is Aged Like Milk, and it's about, but you know, typically like internet posts, and then it's like, oh, that did not age so well. You tweeted right before the pandemic, you said isolation is a gift. And then of course the world locked down uh, and there was a lot of isolation after that. Do you still stand by that comment? Do you still, do you still feel that way? Yes, I still resonate with the power of isolation. Although this isolation has been too long <laughs> for my was- life. Um, you know, that post did come before a whole, a whole pandemic. So I wasn't clocking that. But I do believe that during this time, um, it's even though we can't be traveling in the air, um, there's been a lot of internal travel, a lot of transformation, a lot of rebirth. And that's what my project really speaks to. That's what This Is Fate is all about. It's the, it's the process of rebirth and it's the process of, of reaching your most empowered form. And sometimes, you know, in isolation, we have to lean into those times. We have to lean into our shadow. We have to lean into the things that make us uncomfortable. But once we lean into those things, man, do we get on the other side and things are so much better and, you know, everything is fleeting, you know, nothing lasts forever. And I think that's a, that even speaks to this, to this isolation, like this will be soon over, nothing lasts forever. And what we'll have is we'll have such a renaissance in music, in the music industry. And we're going to hear the best music of our lives. We're going to see the best videos of our lives. We're going to see the best art of our lives. And that's something to look forward to. I love that optimism so, so much. Yeah, isolation, I think, uh, is good. But in small doses, (laughs) not for 365 days straight in a year. (laughs) Uh, so, So tell us right now in your life, what are you most excited about? And there's two categories because there's there's career wise, you know, and then and then there's just personal wise. Yeah, that's a that's a good question, right? Because sometimes as as artists, we just we blend everything into one. We're just like mm-hmm. career, 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 and you know, I think like on on a human basis, like I'm just I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for joy, and I just find ways to always move into my joy. You know what I mean? And like. For me, these days, it's been like drawing like comics and stuff like that. And I think that's been, because I used to do that so much as a kid. I used to draw comics and I would, you know, sell them to my friends for a day. You know, I made it, get it back and ask people what they thought, you know, I made it. I'm really now, because of the time, I'm really exploring that again. So you could definitely look out for some animations that I'll be creating soon, for sure. <laughs> and then as far as my music goes, like, I would say, like, just my, my new release that I got coming out. I'm really excited about it. I think it's such a good time to speak on what the song is speaking to. Um, and I'm really amped on it. It's called City X, and it comes out in March. Yeah, we're really looking forward to that one. Uh, if you could give us, like, if you could describe that new song in three words, no other context, give us three words. Okay, three words. The Radical Imaginaries. Okay. We'll I like take that. that. <laughs> very, very exciting. Uh, just John, thank you so much. Uh, once again, it was an absolute pleasure. That new record coming out in March, March 19th. Uh, the track is called City X. Remember to pick up the, uh, the EP and watch the, uh, watch the short film online. It's a lot of fun. That's on your YouTube page. Uh, just John, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you guys so much. Peace.